Hello and thank you for joining me on this next episode of the IDIFM Ask the Expert interviews. Now this is number seven. I've got an amazing, amazing guest with me today. Um, her name's Amy Massey and she is a girl on a mission to spread a very, very important message. So thank you for joining. Make sure you've subscribed if you haven't already just to catch up with the rest of the videos and let's go. Hello everyone, welcome back to my next Ask the Expert interview as part of IDIFM. Of course, that's I'm doing it for me because that's what this is all about. And it's about, for me, finding people that have got a great story to tell and also a powerful journey um, and want to just spread that word. So I've got the lovely pleasure of Amy's company today. I realise I've just waved the wrong way. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> that's a great start. Um, Amy, come on. We've just been talking for a few minutes and I realise that this is going to be massive. So just tell us a bit about yourself, please. Um, so I originally started doing what I do because I was bullied as a kid. I've always been a fat kid. And um, I ended up getting into a 13-year cycle of binge eating, which was pretty much just turned my life upside down. Couldn't really get a handle on it and I didn't really see a way out of it. So I ended up trying all the different shit that people try, Slimming World, all these fad diets, uh, and I just got absolutely nowhere with it. And then at about 18, I found all over weightlifting, and that completely changed the game for me. I started as a weightlifter, and then because I saw the benefits of what it was doing for me and how it was making me feel, I then got into actually coaching people like myself, other women that were finding it difficult, that wanted to build strength and build confidence um, and I ended up doing what I do now which I couldn't couldn't believe that I would have been doing this if you'd have asked me 12 13 years ago definitely not well I was just going to ask how old you are but my sense of math tells me 31 no I'm 25 okay well my math just went out the window <laughs> <laughs> I'm not offended don't worry my blood, no. <laughs> Well, I, I was only going by what you said. Anyway, um, so what is it exactly that you do? So, personal trainer? I am a personal trainer, a coach, and a full-time Olympic lifter as well. Ooh, see, that bit was the bit that pricked my eyes up when we spoke before. So, mm -hmm. what does a full-time Olympic lifter mean to you? What is it? How does that look? <sighs> to me, it is training four, time, four to five times a week. It is having my nutrition completely on point. It is competing um, at hopefully a national level. I, I say this year, it's now next year at this rate. Um, and it's something that I build a lot of what I do on just because of how mentally and physically challenging it is as well. No, absolutely. I can imagine it is. And, and full time as well, that's quite a commitment. Um so just kind of going back to when you were describing about yourself then. So let's, I'm just going to go straight in. So I know when you messaged me, um, we've talked a little bit about the, the kind of the binging. So mm -hmm. take, take us back to the start and how did that impact you to be able to get you where you are today? So it started when I was a kid in school uh, and it started from the bullying. So it became a comfort mechanism for me of, not essentially having someone to talk to or a way to deal with it but I used to turn to food to get that sort of solution if you like yeah. um, but obviously that didn't help and that is what made it worse and it went I went through a cycle of trying a diet restricting so much that I wasn't I was depriving myself of everything that I really wanted yeah. Then started on that vicious cycle of restricting, binging, restricting, binging, guilt. You know, people do it. People people will know what I mean. Um, and it got to the point where I had a bit of an emotional breakdown at 21 um, and just thought, I can't, I can't keep doing this. This is before I started coaching. And I had to have a bit of an intervention with myself. It got to the point, and I don't say this often, so this is breaking news for you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I actually got to the point where I was hiding food in cupboards where people wouldn't find it, um, yeah. and then lying about it. And I, I used to be able to manipulate people as well into making it out that it was okay, that it was something that I was doing that, you know, it wasn't to be frowned upon and that, I was I was doing it for the right reasons, yeah. um, but it, it got to the point where I was just like, you know what, I'm massively overweight and I can't 
emotionally cope with it anymore and what it's doing to me. And the the thing that made it worse was trying to do cardio and punish myself through exercising and doing all the things that I hated. And then I actually found myself a PT who we spoke about mm -hmm. um, and she got me into weightlifting at, I think it was either 16 or 18. I'd only just got into sort of lifting weights. Yeah, She'll tell you this. I think within about my fourth week, I was pulling 100 kilos and a deadlift already. Wow. And that was, that, that was straight off the bat without any training yeah. whatsoever. So I knew I was, yeah. I've always been strong. I've always been that kid that at school you'd put at the back at Silver Law and they'd absolutely just trounce everyone. That would make <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> um, so I thought, I'm, I'm never going to be an endurance athlete. I'm never going to be a runner. I may as well play to my strengths. So I did... Um, Started doing a bit of weightlifting in like a commercial gym. Mm -hmm. Then I dabbled in strongman for a little while um, and placed in my first competition that I ever did up in Newcastle, wow. um, which was really exciting, but I just didn't want to deal with all the injuries all the time. <laughs> so I sacked that off and then I got into Olympic lifting, um, which I started about four years ago now. Um, and it's just flourished ever since. Fab. I mean, yeah, I mean, I've, I'm doubling at the moment with going a bit stronger and looking at more strength stuff and yeah. a bit of the strong man and I see some of the competitions even when you're looking at world's strongest man and it's just rife because you're taking the body to that extreme and it's not necessarily conventional movements either is it like picking up an oh, stone no. isn't something that necessarily the human body was designed to do no. whereas you could argue that actually picking up a barbell physically and anatomically makes sense it's just you taking to that, to that yeah. stronger extent aren't you um you know, that's incredible because what you know what's refreshing about that part of your story is because we see a lot nowadays and I see a lot in, in the fitness industry and I'm sure you see it as well. Yep. And there's a big, big push and there has been for years, for decades, it's, it's been plaguing there. There's a big thing about weight. So it's mm -hmm. about weight and cardio and sweating and doing this will make you lose weight, weight, weight. And actually, the last couple of years, I know I've realised and, and I'll let you expand on what you think as well, but we know it's not the weight. The weight is literally, if I'm gonna if I'm gonna put this into layman's terms, the weight is how much well, how much weight you're putting on the ground. So if the ground had a voice and it went, Oh, you're getting heavy, that's literally all it is. Yeah. It doesn't define you, it doesn't, you know. I can say to people at the moment, I'm 19 and a half stone. Maybe one out of 20 people would be you know, wouldn't be surprised by that. A lot yeah. of other people would be surprised by that because you think of that and you think, and actually BMI wise, I'm obese. Oh God, yeah. Me too. We, don't, we don't talk about BMI because BMI is a good measure, but it mm -hmm. has to be along with other things as well. It has to be along with overall health and, and fitness. So I take it when you were doing the cardio and doing things you weren't enjoying, was that in, was that with an aim to lose weight then? Or was it a body fat thing or where was your head when, at? When I started doing all the cardio as the punishment, I actually got down to a decent weight, but I just couldn't sustain it because I was just running myself into the ground, yeah. trying to maintain this body shape that I'd got and this weight scale that I would was consistently looking at yeah. and eating barely anything. So I wasn't able to sustain it yeah. as an energy source either. Yeah. Um, and it just made me freaking miserable, to be quite honest. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and that's, I think that's the, um, the point that, I think it's it's really, really interesting and really important to get out there. And I feel it's a really big point as well because it's you've got to be happy with the process. Yes, mm -hmm. it can be challenging. Exercise itself is challenging if you're doing it right, but it doesn't mean that you can't enjoy it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not about that old adage of like a boot camp, like a drill instructor, oh, no. you know, do this, do that, and have people crying or throwing up by the side. If some people want that as a client, some people want that as their exercise stimulus, that's fine. Yeah. But for the majority of people, it's about actually having something that you can look forward to doing, that mm -hmm. you enjoy the exercises while you're doing, or you enjoy the feeling of working hard, or you enjoy the, enjoy the feeling of pump or muscle soreness. The amount of people that love having DOMS, that kind of muscle soreness and going, and that actually identifies that they've worked hard. And apart from the fact that that's not always an indicator of working yeah. hard, we know that. But everybody, the point is everybody's different, aren't they? Yeah. 
I always say to be fair that if you if you start a plan or a regime or a diet and you you know three or four days in and you're already waiting for it to be finished you're doing the wrong diet you're doing the wrong plan yeah yeah the it's almost like the diet itself should be it should become second nature mm -hmm. and actually it should fit in with the rest of your life so for me the point of a diet or a structured eating plan or a way of eating because i've tried intermittent fasting you know, I've done the five two as part of that, or I've done an eating window. I've done, I've tried a load of things, and the ones that worked for me, because there's no magic cure, there's no magic diet. Oh, the, okay. It's a, it's a calorie balance. It's an energy balance between your body, what you're consuming, and what you're exerting. Mm -hmm. But I found the intermittent fasting worked for me because it allowed me to plan my meals. And actually, I was fasting when I was working in an office, yeah. and when I just wanted to get my head down and work, and didn't want to break off for dinner, so. I was fasting through that meal and it gave yeah. me the control, but I did that for six months because it just been, it just became second nature. And that allowed that consistency plan allowed me to then work harder or enjoy other aspects of life. So it doesn't yeah. need to be the be all and end all. If you're sat watching and going, Oh, it's 30 seconds until my fasting window's done. And you sat there, you know, and then you're rushing for your food every day. That's not a way to live, is it? No, absolutely not. So what are your what are your goals at the moment for you then? I know we, obviously we're in we're in a lockdown position at the moment. So my goals personally, as in how how I do things like my body shape and everything, I have a body fat percentage goal and I have a waist measurement goal. I took the scales out a long time ago. <laughs> I have the same issue. I think when at my heaviest I was 120 kilos. Um, I still had a body fat percentage of thirty percent, so it, it it just that was the thing that triggered me to start with. So I, I just threw those out a long time ago. Uh, body fat percentage, I want to get down to about twenty five percent during this lockdown. Just getting my nutrition into check, getting my steps up. Like I was saying earlier, workouts are all right, but they're just not the same, especially in the realms of what I do. Um, I can't be flinging a barbell around at home because I just don't have the space. <laughs> Um, and I don't think my neighbours would appreciate a barbell coming through the wall either, if anything went uh, Pete Tom. <laughs> no. Perfect. Well, do you know what? We could try and pretend that a courier hasn't just turned up at the door, but I think in terms of people listening or watching this, they're going to wonder why it sounds a bit different and why the conversation is yeah. a bit disjointed. So this is why you arrange deliveries for times that you're not doing an interview. <laughs> so, I mean, you've said, which is a really, really good point about throwing the scales out um, a while ago and it not being your kind of focus for your goal um what would if is there anything that you'd say to somebody maybe they're sat in a position now and they're not happy with the way they are um maybe they feel or they are clinically overweight mm -hmm. per se and there's so many different options and there's so many different pressures out there on what that body image should be is there anything you would say to that person to consider or something that helps you make a decision on what your goals I would are say focus on three different things so what you're eating and the quality of what you're eating. Yep. If you find yourself going through a period like this in a lockdown and you're eating takeaways every night and drinking endlessly every single night, then that's going to impact yeah. your mood and your energy levels for the rest of the day and the days after. So changing, making small changes in that respect is going to make a massive difference. If you feel better, you're going to be more inclined to go out on walks, getting your steps up, drinking more water, and it's going to have a knock-on effect through all the different realms um, of, of what you're going to be able to improve. Yeah, that's a, that's a really good piece of advice because I think as well, I think we all, I know I do, have times where you get into a bit of a slump or something might take your mind, so actually you start eating stuff that just makes you feel worse. And yeah. it doesn't matter what it is. And, you know, there aren't such things as, I don't believe there's such things as bad foods. I did for years, but now I'm in the added that, I mean, the, the mindset that there's no such thing as a bad food. There's just things that either aren't nutritionally amazing for you, they don't give you energy, or they make me feel tired and they make me feel bloated, whatever. So I try, you know, try and avoid them where I can if I don't want to feel that way. And, you know, it's, it's about remembering the small changes that then, they almost snowball don't they once you make them small changes you can then you can then build that foundation to to work on as well i mean what um to in terms of that then so we've got somebody they're, they're starting and they're going to make small changes to the food so they've accepted that you know thinking right i'll write down maybe i would say a good thing would be might be a food diary for yourself just to be accountable for the things that you are eating um so at that point then 
what about exercise? So we talked briefly and, and I'll ask to expand on. At the moment, we're in lockdown. So what is it you're doing? And is there any advice you'd tell people in terms of exercise or activity? Going out and getting your knee up, go and getting your steps outdoors, aiming for something reasonable between six and ten. If you've if you don't do many steps all at once in a day, then I would not recommend going out and getting 10,000 steps a day because A, you're not going to be able to keep it consistent and B, you, you're just going to hate it unless you like walking. But getting, getting that is going to do a lot more for you than trying to do a home workout for 30 minutes and hating it, essentially. You're going out, you're getting vitamin D, you're getting fresh air. It's, it's much better for you. So you're almost saying it's it's looking at the body and, and looking at how you're fueling it and then how you're expending that energy, I mm -hmm. suppose. And it's like you're quite right. I really, really agree. And there's not many people that identify that, that if you set yourself a goal that's too big, then only a few people, a small percentage of people will be able to dedicate a part of the day to getting that task done. Mm -hmm. So that'll be in addition to the day. Whereas if you've got something that's closer to that, it may just mean doing things slightly differently. So one of the things that I suggested, one of the things that I started doing myself was if I see something needs doing, especially in the house, rather than going, I'll do it later, I'll do it now. Mm -hmm. Because right then, you, you're then able to, we know that in terms of the mind, once we can identify something needs doing and then we tick it off the list, there's actually gratification in that. Yep. But also you then up in that activity rather than going, I'll do it tomorrow. And then chances are you don't do it tomorrow. Somebody else does it. Yeah. So simple things like going up the stairs. You'd be, you know, be surprised doing, you know, I've got four cats, so we've got litter trays. We've got all this stuff all around the house and it's not the greatest job to look forward to, but to know that it's actually keeping your activity up is a great and powerful thing. Now you mentioned neat. So I just want you to go into what is neat. So I know the answer, but anyone watching this may not know the answer. So NEAT stands for Non-Exercise Activity Thermogenesis, if you want the big scientific boffin word for it. <laughs> um, it is basically the non-planned exercise that we do day in and day out. And it's not just walking, it's things like fidgeting, um, cleaning, just doing all these random things that we do every day that just burn excess calories. Um, but one thing I have learned about it, which might interest some, some of you out there, is that doing between eight and 10,000 steps a day will actually burn more overall calories than doing um, a moderate workout for the day. Obviously, if you're an athlete and you're doing, you know, twice, <laughs> twice sessions a day, then probably not so much. Um, but for the average Joe who's doing just a moderate gym workout, you'll actually burn more calories if your aim is fat loss by getting, getting your steps in. And, and that from a, from my point of view, making sense of that, because that's really interesting. I hadn't thought about it like that. But then when I've looked at what I've burned, so, and again, side point on this, if you're using a fitness tracker or you're relying on your watch to tell you how many calories you've burned, nope, don't. Maybe if it's telling you you did more than you did yesterday, that's fine. But as an accurate number, we can't take that. There's yeah, various reasons. For what we're doing, but when you look at a workout, even the most intense workout I have ever done in an hour got me about 450 yep you know calories which if we're going to use it as a kind of a basis because you've got you've got rest periods you've got all you've got all sorts in there and it's really difficult to, to work out but then if you're walking and you, there's that consistent use of energy um and it's all body weight because walking is body weight naturally then that makes absolute sense so yeah and sometimes you're not in a position to to be able to do the workout um and you know what's what's a really interesting one? So I've had a few clients that have tried things like, you know, Slimming World and other other plans with step targets in there. And I've met quite a lot of people that walk on the spot. Right. <laughs> you know, on an evening, on an evening, yeah. they're watching TV and they'll stand there and they'll march on the spot. Right. Or watching TV. Now, it's not ideal because the benefits of going outside is you're getting vitamin D, you're getting, yeah. you're getting all that other stuff. But... Somebody that does that, that chooses to do that, to hit their step count day in, day out, and they feel that is that way, that's going to be much better than trying to aim to do a big walk five times a week and managing it twice. True. Coming from my perspective, though, there is a very, very fine line mm -hmm. between doing it because you're enjoying it and doing mm -hmm. it because it's obsessive. Mm -hmm. mm, very mm -hmm. fine line. There, there is. There is. And that I suppose the result of that and, and seeing 
whether which side of that line you sit on, mm. it's the the consistency of it. Because although, well, it's it's whether you're able to keep it up. And actually, yeah. there's a there's a point there that while I would go out for a walk and listen to a podcast or listen to an audio book, somebody else might stand there and watch a TV program, and that might be their you know motivated to do it. Yeah. So it's not the best way. However, it's moving. It's moving more. It's doing um, it with what you enjoy. And this is why people can't stay consistent at stuff because they try and stay consistent at something that they hate doing. Yeah. So they're having to force themselves and create motivation every day yeah. to, to do something that they hate doing and have to get all that energy up and psych themselves up to go out for a walk. It's like people that have taken up running during lockdown. <laughs> people hate running, but yeah. they psych themselves up to go out for a run because they see other people doing it and yeah. they assume that that is what they should be doing. Yeah. And... Yes, it will burn calories. Um, but I would say anyone that doesn't like running is forcing themselves, just go for a longer walk. Yeah. Because exactly. you'll burn the same amount of calories. It's just more time efficient is running. And I would dare say that I see a lot more people struggle with knee injuries or yeah. you know, over time feet problems because of because of running. So unless it's an actual passion of yours, I'd, I'd probably advise walking. <laughs> um yeah, for that reason, really, it can yeah. get quite messy, can it? Unless you've got the right warm up and the right physio and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah. It's really, it's really funny because it's an industry that I think now because of because of lockdown, people have had to. I think people have had to reprioritize. I know I've had to reprioritize on what's important to me, mm -hmm. and I've been from a personal point of view. I've been a binge dieter. I'm a hard gainer or an extreme dieter. And that coming, you know, coming from a PT myself or a coach, then that's okay. That's okay to acknowledge that you've done it, but also know that it's not put you in the best frame of mind. So you might feel excellent at the time. But I look back now and I've, considering I'm what, nearly 20 stone, um, I'm the heaviest I've ever been. The lightest I did was after an eight week diet in 2018, I got down to 15 stone. Now, at the time, I felt great. I had abs. I didn't want to let go of the abs. I thought I'm never going back to have any, you know, never anything but abs. No, I wasn't what they call shredded. I wasn't stage ready or whatever like that. But I look back now and I feel like I look ill. Mm. And that's not to say that anyone that aims to look like that looks ill. That's my perception. Now I look back and go, I look, I don't want to look like that again. Yeah. And it's about realizing that actually the best, the best place for you to be is a mixture of two things it's where you feel most happy and comfortable and also and i think this has been missed in the media with the whole karen butch magazine it was with the, the famous front cover of you know some of the oh yeah, yeah. some of the bigger ladies on there mm. it's also got to have a part of it of well how healthy are you how health how well's your body running yeah. because it's okay saying well just live how you are the happiest well that's fine if you accept that you may well die which is which yeah. there will there will some be you know or earlier there, there will be some people that that accept the putting themselves at risk but i'd like to think that most people if you are thinking about making a change that's why you're saying things like and we both say you know start with the food start with the, the little routine start with feeding yourself better things mm -hmm. so that your body runs better and actually it will thank you by you know losing body fat or you know all the other things that, that come with that um Absolutely. it's definitely a it's an interesting one because when you're in that moment and you're thinking i'm not happy sometimes you can't see the wood for the trees it's uh, over over lockdown my what is the right word for this my perception has shifted from a lot of what i don't want to be yeah. to what i do want to be yeah. and putting my attention on my intentions rather than yes. focusing on what I don't want out of lockdown, what I don't want out of life and just shifting that focus to actually, this is what I want. This is what I want to gain. This is what I want to happen. And the more that you do that and you look at what you actually value, which as you said earlier is becoming a lot more prominent now that we've been stripped of everything yeah. Any, anything else that we can do apart from just be with ourselves and family at the minute and it's once you realize what you value everything changes because all the things that like having abs for some people what they 
what women <laughs> usually are conditioned to think that they want mm-hmm. through social media magazines um through what they see on the streets and things like that we're conditioned to think that because she looks like this and people praise her for looking like this i must look like this as well this must be what's acceptable but when we actually look at what we value as selves mm-hmm. it's probably a lot different to that and that's where i got a lot of clarity from coming from the binge eating disorder yeah. into not having it i got offered um the behavioral therapy and got put on a waiting list mm-hmm. i got offered antidepressants at the time and i didn't take either because i thought i don't want something clouding my judgment yeah for something that I can do myself and like I was saying to you earlier once I got clear on that everything everything just kind of changed and I didn't feel like I needed to do that anymore because I wasn't going through the all or nothing principle anymore yeah having that balance and finding my values allowed me to you know think that the world wasn't ending and that I could actually have everything in moderation yeah yeah because I know you mentioned one of the the turning points, one of the actions of the kind of the turning point for you was starting a certain type of training or just, Mm -hmm. you know, getting a trainer or just starting to go to the gym. Um, What other, what other things did you put into place then? So in terms of the binge eating, obviously I'm guessing that's not a switch that you can turn on and off. It's something that you've got to train yourself out of and change your perception on it. It's, it's, there is days that I still go back to that and I'm like, no, hang on a minute. It's when when you're not focused on something, you always refer to your lowest level of training, which was that. So when I come to an emotional situation, if I don't use my now form of training, I revert back to that because it's like my my autopilot because I did it for so long. Yeah. So it's something you have to put something in place of it. It's like an addiction. Yeah. Obviously, if you come off of drugs or alcohol abuse or whatever it is, you have to have something in place of that, whether it's a new sport that you undertake, whether it's a hobby or whatever it is, there's always got to be something replacing it. You can never just go off and that's it. Yeah. No, thank you for that insight because I think, again, there'll be hopefully a lot of well some people maybe watching this maybe dipping into this kind of thing and finding out a bit more about themselves and listening to you and going you know this is this is a girl this is a woman that's worked for and made massive changes and works for what she wants she's enjoying enjoying stuff enjoying the job she's got as well and actually there were people that do see themselves it used to be it used to look like with the normal working week before we're in this kind of lockdown situation that there were a lot of people sticking to a diet plan or being good during the week and then having like cheat days or Mm -hmm. almost living for the weekend now we're almost in a society at the moment where each day is the same where there's not really that much differentiating them and i dare say from speaking to people that because of that people are gaining weight or eating more because you're at home because there's almost nothing to especially with the gyms being closed which is another whole topic of conversation itself um almost falling into routines of eating worse and i know i've done it Mm -hmm. i know there's days there's days where i go completely crazy um with food because you know like you maybe not to that extreme but i've had a bad relationship with food and it's i think sometimes it comes from working in the industry (laughs) um yes it can do definitely because you you get fed you know, you get taught different ways of things working and then you go, well, you'll see somebody else on Instagram, you know, looking amazing, which, by the way, they probably look like that for about a month, a year, if that, you know, just after Or they don't diet. do the same things that they're prescribing clients that eats. Well, yeah, or they do something yeah. different to what they're saying, yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, well, I suppose what I'm trying to say, what I'm trying to put across is it's normal to feel like you're not fully in control at the moment especially when it comes to eating patterns and when it comes to your activity dipping because mm-hmm. we're not able to do as much we're not leaving the house we're not doing commuting or a lot of people aren't commuting people aren't exercising in the same way that they would but we spoke about ways in which people can get active and increase that need um so i suppose if 
I was to ask you if there was one thing to summarize a message a message that you would like to send out to anyone that's listening or watching this about what you've learned or something to take away from this hopefully we can add value to someone's day from actually having this chat um what would that be if you don't have something to focus on and you're not solving problems your brain will start to create more problems than you're solving this is where you start to run into problems especially in this kind of scenario if you don't have something that you can put your attention on, that you can work through, even if it's, even if it's like a puzzle during lockdown, mm -hmm. you will find that you're not tending to go for all these different things, these emotionally in the crutches, the, the everything that you would usually turn to in a time of distress like this. Set yourself a focus, set yourself a goal and prioritize that rather than creating new problems from sitting and overthinking. Wow, that's really interesting, that. Because... It's complete human nature. Yeah. Well, it's... And I've spoken about this at length before, and it's the old fight-or-flight reaction that the, the prehistoric brain has, and we still have in us today, but because we don't have... Because we don't walk out the house and get eaten by a lion, mm -hmm. the brain then picks on the smallest things, and it can be in the space of like you said, something to focus on, something almost, it's marrying up that, that kind of survival instinct. Well, I want to find out how to do that. and I'm going to set myself a little chance to do it and do it and overcome that. Then the brain looks at little things and it, and it can just go haywire, which is why sometimes you can feel a bit worried or anxious about something and it's tiny. And you know, it's, you're almost telling yourself it's tiny and you go, why am I worried about this? But you are still worried about it. And that's, again, like you're saying, the brain is, been a bit of a bugger yeah. but it is just doing what it's been programmed to do isn't it if you want another tip but as well this is well, something that i heard yesterday that completely blew my mind is the mind's um primal instinct or job is to justify your current emotional state so this is why we make up all the oh exactly my face is exactly the same thing <laughs> This is why we justify all these little things that we do, like, oh, I'll sleep in a, a little hour earlier, it, a, a, an hour later, it won't make a difference, or I'll just eat this chocolate bar because I've screwed up my entire diet today, so it doesn't really matter anyway. Yeah. It's that. Once you, once you look at that and start flipping your perspective on things, life-changing. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's a lot to that, actually, because I've been looking at a lot of things, um, in terms of doing things because you want to do them and learning the value of the tasks that you're doing and actually reprioritizing or actually either not doing or delegating the things that exactly. aren't your passion. Um, and I think it stems from me reading Mark Manson, um, yeah. The Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fuck. Great book. <laughs> um, which, which is a great one because it's, it's actually, it's not about not caring. It's no. about putting your energy into things that you care about and that you want to do. Mm -hmm. and not putting the energy into stuff that you don't so it's still it's almost filling you full of um, positivity but one of the one of the kind of takeaways that i've said to people and, and, and a few tips is one of the first things i did at the start of the very first lockdown because that hit me like a freight train and i had to really adjust what i was thinking and doing is i make to-do lists but I'll, ha I'll end up with like seven of them dotted around the house that yeah. the, there isn't one central to-do list and my coach said to me at the time, he said, well, how about you make it a want-to-do list? And although it's, you know, washing the dishes, might be yeah. on it, for example, it's not the washing the dishes that you want to do. Some people may well enjoy it and enjoy your niche, but... It's what you get out of it. Yeah, it's the clean kitchen afterwards. It's the not having to do it later, not having to have it sat in your mind that I need to still do that and put it off. Mm -hmm. It's actually doing that. And now, genuinely, I actually enjoy washing the dishes, which may well seem a little bit menial. But at the moment, when we're at home a lot more, it doesn't matter. It doesn't, you yeah. know, it doesn't matter. Just like I remember being a kid and my mum liked doing the ironing. So she'd watch a whole uh, omnibus of Coronation Street while doing it. You know, it's, it's some of these funny moments. But yeah, and so I can, I can see that. So setting yourself a bit of a challenge, setting yourself a puzzle or even a goal, something to focus on, will almost give that, that mental clarity. Yeah, we only get we only get a payoff of the things that we perceive that have got value. Yeah. 
Yeah. And we we also get a benefit of not doing the things that we don't want to do either because we benefit from not doing them. Yes. So it's, it's, it's finding that balance, like you say, either getting on with it or delegating or just not doing it at all. Hence, like, why I have... I'd, I used to be a person that would just kind of ride by the coattails and not mm -hmm. really have a plan or anything like that. Now, for me, a schedule is absolutely critical so that I am on track and know what I'm doing. I've got all my to-do list in there on the day. And that stops me from then creating problems myself by having an hour to just sit and think and question my every life choice I've ever made. <laughs> That's hitting on another very, very good point. I'm, I'm not going to expand too much because I realise we could probably talk about this for hours and anything. But that's the other roadblock, I think. That's the other challenge at the moment with spending a lot more time at home and maybe, maybe working in a different way is actually spending more time with yourself mm -hmm. and actually learning. Not only learning what your values are and what you actually enjoy in life and reprioritising like we've talked about, but also there are going to be things that bring up emotion because a lot of the time we put things to the side, we distract ourselves by keeping busy. But especially, you know, if you're a parent or you've got other responsibilities, carer, there's all these different roles that we have. And you put stuff away and you go, right, no, it's fine. I can deal with that. That's just there. Now, when there's nothing like we say, when your brain's, when you're trying, when you're not doing actively a task, when you're not focused on something, that's the time when these things come to head. And it's not that you've got problems, then actually what's exciting about that is if that's causing you emotion, that's the next thing that's going to hold massive power and value for you if you can work it out. Mm. Work out, you know, what's happened, where it sits. Um, it's how you respond to it. Yeah. yeah. It's how you respond to it. And, and I think there's a big thing about perception as well and how you perceive. Oh, yeah. And expectation. So I mm -hmm. think they're, they're three pretty good words. Um, but yeah, because two things could happen on two different days and one day you feel happy one day you feel sad the same events could happen but the day would look completely different mm -hmm. but the day is the same for you because you said um, expectation anger is just unmet expectation so when we get mad at other people yeah. like this is happening for me in lockdown at the minute when you're in cl close quarters with like your other halves for instance if you've not been you know not been together long or you've been married for years and years you only get mad at that other person, especially under high stress, because they're not doing things the way that you want them to. Mm -hmm. Or you you have a certain perception of how something should be done. We all know the saying, if you want something, do it properly, do it yourself. <laughs> That's yeah. where that comes from. Okay. So as a, game, as a good game of tennis, I'm going to do an Andy Murray and pass it back to you by saying, a good friend of mine told me, he gave me an equation, and he said, frustration, so anger, yeah. equals expectation minus reality. Yeah. So by that example, so say your partner hasn't cleaned up after themselves or they refuse, they just don't. So the reality is it's obviously not in their thinking to do it. So they're just being them by not mm -hmm. doing it. So if your expectation is that they should do it, you take away the reality, you've then, you're then left with frustration. If you don't expect that person to do it, then doing it yourself suddenly just becomes part of the day. Mm -hmm. You don't get any frustration. Mm -hmm. It's just like holding the door. The, the easiest one to understand is holding the door open for someone. If you hold the door open yeah. for someone because you want to do it because you're a kind person and they don't say thank you, well, that's fine. But if you do it to expect people to say thank you because you expect they should have manners, then that's when you get frustrated. And actually mm -hmm. one further than that, <laughs> is by you getting frustrated and having that expectation if you look at it closely enough there are times when you show the same behavior as the person you're getting frustrated about yeah you just don't see it so once you start opening yourself up to that whoa this got deep love oh, it 100%. we only judge people and get start to criticize other people because we can see in them what we see in ourselves it's mental but Sometimes, I learned this yesterday as well, if people aren't conforming to what you think they should be doing, you have to be okay with that. And that's the emotional response. You have to be okay with it. You can't change people. You can't control other people. So no. You've got to be okay with it. No. 
Which is why I'm constantly telling people in the fitness arena to stop getting angry at people that do Herbalife. Well, <laughs> that's not going to soon. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's, it's whatever. T- if somebody wants to do a cabbage diet or a detox diet, so that's up to them. And if by default doing that helps them get progress and they'll never stick on it because you can't sustain it. But if mm. that's the thing that holds somebody or a brand or these products, you know, these fat burners or these teas. Now, it's not the products themselves that will get success. It never is. Yeah. It's the routine that that gives them and actually the changing habits and the changing, you know, fuels and exercise and activity that gives them mm-hmm. that actually works as well. So as a PT and as a coach, what we would do is we would say, and I know I take this stance is, okay, so you train that. That's fine. How's it going for you? Is it working? Are you feeling good? Does it give you energy? You know, are you feeling healthy? Mm-hmm. If the answer is yes, fine, I'm going to leave it alone. If you come to me and you're looking tired and you're not sleeping and you're feeling all this stuff, then we're going to have a conversation about it. And it's about mm-hmm. education, isn't it? Exactly. But yeah, if we free up expectation and we try and live without judgment as much mm-hmm. as we can, it's a different world. You've got to remember that everyone is trying to do the best. Everyone is, it's like the trolls online. Like I get a lot of them and I know a lot of people in the fitness industry get them. I have to see that person with empathy because they are doing what is best for them right now and they they are doing the best with what they've got so not responding to things like that and obviously people that do herbalife and stuff like that they'll get hit for it but they are doing what is best for them right now not everyone else yeah so (laughs) yeah and do you know what if you're watching this and you're the kind of person that likes to apply things and likes to learn things like i think we both do when we do personal development stuff when we read stuff is if you're going to apply this kind of non-judgment rule, if you're just going to see people as themselves, learn to love them for who they are, and whether that means you want to spend more time with them or less time with them, that's fine, whatever you decide. If you still feel judgmental towards somebody, that's still fine. It's programmed in us. Mm -hmm. Make judgments, and it's all part of that fight or flight. It's all part of that kind of response. It -hmm. doesn't mean you're a bad person, but it's how you then perceive that and act on it and how that affects you. If you go... Oh, I'm not sure that they're not doing that right. And then you go, well, okay. Can I sh- should I show them? Should somebody else show them? Or should I just leave them to it? I'll leave them to it. That's fine. I'm going to move on. Mm. That then becomes a different matter. So if you're going to apply this, because I do this all the time, you feel judgmental towards someone and you feel bad for being judgmental. And then that could be quite, that could be a negative loop itself. But that is normal. And it's part of the process of trying to live an unjudgmental life, I would say. Yeah. It's about protecting your own energy as well and not getting involved in all these little dramas like Facebook and social media, they'll all pop up because all you're doing in getting involved in these things is just adding fuel to the fire. And every time that someone gets involved or anything, if you do find yourself in this situation, let's put it this way, a game of tennis only stops when you stop returning the ball. Yep. Stop returning it, protect your own energy and just take yourself out of the equation. And with negative situations like that as well, just remove yourself and protect yourself. Yeah. Um, and also, I think a final part from me before we uh, before I ask for a couple of bits from you, just in case anyone wants to speak to you, is I made a point the other day, one of my various TikTok videos, which TikTok is a really interesting one as well, but I think I was doing first aid with my cubs um, as a cub leader. And what I realised was one of the first things that I, I didn't realise from being a kid doing first aid was, One of the first things they tell you is to stay calm because being calm, the the victim in this sense, in a first aid sense, will mirror how you are. So if you ever find yourself in a conversation, especially with a friend, if it's someone you don't know, like you say, walk away, don't return the ball. You don't need Mm -hmm. to. But if it's someone you care about and that person's feeling particularly negative and they're vocalizing that and and they're projecting that and they're speaking to you, you can reach a point where you feel like you have to level with them. So you have to drag yourself down into that and that can feel uncomfortable and it can leave you feeling, that conversation can leave you feeling sad or miserable. It can change your day if you've had a conversation with someone. What I want to leave the thought is that actually maybe if you're feeling positive about life and someone's there complaining about their life, then maybe being positive, being constructive or being positive and being there for them but still being yourself and saying how great things are going Maybe that's the equivalent of staying calm when someone's in need. It's being a lighthouse for other people, mm-hmm. showing the way. 
you're not showing off. No. You're literally just projecting exactly what they are. They feel bad, so they're giving you bad. You feel good, so you're giving good. And mm -hmm. that is infectious, isn't it? Mm-hmm, 100%. Fab. Well, I don't think this will be the last time we talk over this because I'd love to pick your <laughs> brain on a load of other stuff. I think there's a load of stuff we've got in common. But if anyone wanted to get in touch with you, then Amy, um, how are they best to do so? You can find me on Instagram at it's Amy Massey. Uh, that's my Instagram handle. You can find me on my website at uh, projectunstoppable.co.uk, which Strong is my programme. Um, and you can also find me at Coach Gyms in Leeds as well, where I'm currently a personal trainer. Fabulous. Well, thank you very much for your time. And for anyone that's watching, please do check out the other videos that I've got on YouTube. This is number seven. So there are six more before this. There'll be plenty more after it. And they're also available on podcasts as well. If you are on YouTube or the podcast, please do subscribe just so I can continue to do this stuff. Because if I feel like no one's listening, then... It'll make me sad. <laughs> so thank you for your time, Amy. Um, and welcome. for you guys. See you later. Wow, what a guest Amy was. Can't thank her enough for the time she's put with me today. It's quite a long video, but I'm sure you'll agree that we could have talked for a long time after that as well. So thank you for joining us. Please make sure you subscribe to the channel as well. It just allows me to Keep doing these videos if I know you guys are watching as well. And make sure you check out the other six interviews we've done and waiting to see notifications on the ones that I'm going to do in the future as well because I can't wait to speak to some more inspirational people. So take care, whatever you're doing with the rest of your day. Focus on something, as Amy said. Give yourself something to focus on so that you can win each day. And as ever, stay super.